Welcome to a journey through the history of art. We will travel along a timeline from the caves to the 19th century. My name is Dr. Jean Ouellette. Let's begin by making the familiar unfamiliar. Learning how to read a new form of visual language called iconography. The Moreau altarpiece of 1428 and the Arnolfini wedding of 1434 are famous examples of how the artists of the Northern Renaissance communicated with an audience through symbolism. The Christian iconography was a universal language understood throughout Europe. The Portinori altarpiece of 1474 by Hugo van der Goes, a Northern artist, was a commission for an Italian patron. However, the northern artists deployed a far more rich and complex system of codes than the Italian artists did. Robert Campin, the master of Flemal, painted one of the first panel paintings in oil. Depicting the Annunciation full of complex symbols, the Marode altarpiece is a veritable scholar's paradise for the art historian as a decoder. The steep, tilted perspective is functional, but hardly scientific, as it would be in the South. But the disguised symbolism is ingenious. The artist invented a complicated narrative, fairly bristling, with a convoluted iconography, a myriad of symbols to be decoded. On the left, the donors kneel before the door to Mary's home, surrounded by a wall seen in the background. The wall is the walled garden of Mary's chastity. The central panel symbolized the Virgin's chastity through the white lily in a vase, while on the right panel, her much older husband Joseph makes a mousetrap to catch the devil. Or does he? Likewise, scholars hunt through the disguised symbolism of Jan van Eyck for clues to meanings. Ordinary household objects have double meanings. In the Arnolfini wedding and in the Marode altarpiece, there is a single candle, the presence of Christ. But why is one lit and one extinguished? The Arnolfini wedding of 1434 by Jan van Eyck as a small private oil painting glowing in brilliant reds and greens made on the occasion of a wedding. An example of what Panofsky called microscopic telescopic, this painting is a detailed examination of a privileged lifestyle in Northern Europe. The household furnishings and elaborate clothes all revealed in stunning details from close-ups of the little dog and the distant examination of a rosary hanging on the back wall. The painting was also a wedding license signed by the artist as a witness. The iconography was appropriate for a wedding in a private home. The little dog added later symbolizes faithfulness. The fruit on the windowsill at the left symbolizes fecundity. The discarded shoes on the floor indicate that the couple's feet must not be shod, for they are on holy ground. The Arnolfini wedding was a new emphasis on the daily life of real people. Religion is pushed to the background. Reality is the content, heralding the fact that the society was secular and that the task of the northern artist was to examine and to render this world. Although Italy, due to its direct access to ancient sculpture and classical knowledge, took the lead in the revival of Greek and Roman culture, the art of the North reveals that the Netherlandish artists are far less involved with the past, whether biblical or classical, and more involved with the present. This involvement with the contemporary would prove to be crucial. Although the Italian artists would have been incredulous to consider that one day they would lose the lead position to the northern artists, that is exactly what would happen in 200 years.